There are many types of Moshiach ben Dovid in the Tanakh. There's the Ark of Noah. There's uh, the Ladder of Yaakov. There's the Pesach Korban, the Lamb. There's the Pillar of Cloud and Fire. There's the Rock. And, and we know Mosh Moshiach is that rock. And uh, it had to be struck. And it was struck in the wilderness. And the water of life gushed out. There's the Mishkan, the tabernacle. There's that red cord of uh, Rahab. There's that bronze serpent that when you look up, you're, you're, you're healed. You look up and you live. Uh, that serpent raised up on a pole that shows us how our sin was raised up. Hallelujah. But I want to talk about something else today. Uh, I want to talk about the Etz Moshiach, the, the tree. There, there's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then there's the tree of life. So this word tree is very important from the outset. Uh, we know that people were executed and they were hanged or pierced or put on stakes or raised up to rot in public. Sometimes it took days for them to die. Sometimes the birds of prey would come and peck at them. Normally, the way that people were executed in capital punishment was by stoning. Leviticus 20, verse 2, uh, Devarim, or Deuteronomy 22, 24. But the Torah did permit the public display of a body hanging on a tree, but it was not to remain hanging there overnight but it had to be given a burial. And we find that in uh, Devarim, Deuteronomy 21, verse 23. But the thing that was so degrading was to allow the victim not only to hang there naked in public, but to actually rot in public. Die and then rot in public, displayed by hanging, uh, accursed of God. It says in uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 53, uh, we thought he was accursed of God, stricken, I, you know, like a leper is stricken, smitten of God. If God smites you, my friend, uh, you are cursed. Uh, we thought that this was his fate to be smitten of God and accursed. Uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4. And we know this is about Ben Dovid because in chapter 11, verse 10, it's talking about the Shoresh Yishai meaning the Davidic Messiah, and then that Shoresh occurs again in the second verse of, of, of Isaiah 53, which means that he is now picking up where he left off in chapter 11, and he's talking about Moshiach ben Dovid as someone who is smitten of God and cursed. Isaiah 53, verse 5. And... Uh, he was cursed. Why was he cursed? 
for our sins. He became accursed of God uh, by hanging on a tree for us. And we know that uh, this it's Hamoshiach salvation on a stake was something God was looking forward to in Moshiach's death all along. And when we say death, we mean death by suffocation or exhaustion normally following this agonizing pain of being strung up like this in public. And uh, why is this important? Why is it significant? Uh, well, he even tells us before his death, uh, he speaks of the it's shell Masiris Nefesh, the self-sacrifice uh, of the Etz Hatamidim, the tree of all disciples, Matthew 10, 38, Mark uh, 10, 21, Luke 14, 27. Unless we're willing to sacrifice ourselves, I'm talking about self-sacrifice. We cannot be his Talmud, his disciple. And he's looking at this instrument already, even before he goes to it himself, as something that he must preach to his followers. Because this is our salvation. This is what saves us from the fire. The fact that he died in this humiliating and painful, terrible way vicariously for us, and then he stood up alive from the dead vicariously for us to show us not only his willingness to suffer for our sins, but how we have been reconciled and how we can know his peace and even death cannot claim us ultimately this is the glory of the gospel that even though he was nailed to the tree uh the debt of our sin was nailed there with him. Now, I don't know whether you have had an experience with credit card debt or not, but credit card debt can be a, a, a horrible ordeal. Not only does your credit suffer, but you have these bill collectors coming after you. And sometimes the credit card company will actually sue you and a, a process server will be knocking at your door. And so you don't want to answer your phone because it's going to be a debt collector. You don't want to uh, go to the door and open the door because it's going to be a process server. You, you can't walk down the street without thinking that maybe the process server from the court uh, regarding the lawsuit of the credit card company might be behind any tree or lurking uh, around any building and you're going to run into that person and he's going to hand you the court documents and you're going to have to to go to court so you are a refugee from the law you're it's almost like you you're an escapee from the jail and now you have to look over your shoulder all the time for the sheriff and that is the horror of credit card debt and americans right now maybe they don't understand their own sin debt but they understand their credit card debt americans are walking around with fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt uh the whole nation has uh, a trillion dollars or more in credit card debt 
uh, our our whole economy is threatened. Not just the inflation, but but the actual indebtedness of our country. So if I can get you concerned and nervous about credit cards, let me then take that a step further and tell you that you have a sin debt. And that sin debt you cannot pay. Uh, it's impossible. We find in the Psalms uh, that it is, it's impossible uh, for anyone to pay his own sin debt because he couldn't have enough money to pay that debt. It's too high. The debt is too too much. But our debt was nailed to the tree. And that's the wonderful good news of Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. And like the Ghana who repented, we are also nailed with him. Galatians 2.20. And, and we are dead. Our old life is dead. It is no longer I who live. The old me has passed away. There's a new person looking at you through my eyeballs, a new creature. I've been made alive to God, Romans 6, 6 to 11. And so we see the love of Moshiach ben David in the Etz HaMoshiach. God so loved the world. He so loved the world. He took his ben Yohid and put him on the accursed tree to take your curse. Curse is everyone who's hanged on a tree. He took your curse. You say, what curse? The curse of Deuteronomy that says, cursed is everyone who does not fulfill all the words of this Torah to do it. And so that's why we're thankful. And that's why we pick up the Etz Shel Mesurus Nefesh, the tree of self-sacrifice, and we carry our own our own sacrifice. And we follow him. So if you get this picture, you have him with his tree, which is a vicarious sacrifice for others. And then following him are all these millions of true believers each one who have picked up their it's shell Masura Snepish, and they're following after him. And this is the power of the Masura Sagela, the good news all over the world, that all of this self-sacrifice is making a difference on the foreign field where natives who were living in debauchery with an uncivilized and horrendous culture are finding the love of the Lord and the naked savages are now getting their clothes on and becoming civilized. Now, if you don't believe in the word of God, if this has not happened to you, this revolution, this change, this new creation, you might say, leave those savages alone. We give a picture. We give this picture out on the street. Uh, uh, this picture is a man who was a drug dealer a vicious, hardened criminal, a felon with a gun, with a harem of girls who were his slaves, who was selling drugs, who himself was a drug addict, and he was living in this total debauchery. And in the picture, you see the before with his dark countenance. But then, 
in the after picture, you see the light of God all around him and in his face, a completely different person, as gentle as a lamb, someone who would pray for you, someone you would want as a friend. How can this transformation be? It's because of our Moshiach ben Dovid, who took our curse for us, the just for the unjust, to bring us to God. We're talking about Ha'etz HaMoshiach. This is what he endured, disregarding its shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Hashem was in Moshiach reconciling the Olam Hazer to himself, not reckoning their avonot, their iniquities against them, and putting in us the Devar Haritsui, the message of reconciliation, so that we as emissaries of peace, of shalom, can entreat people be reconciled to God. And uh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. He erased the hand-signed safer of guilt. The hive, the guilt. Can you imagine if you were $50,000 in debt with a credit card and you were afraid to answer the phone because you know it's a credit card collector. You were afraid to answer the door because you know it's a process server from the court because the credit card company has sued you. You can't buy anything. Everybody knows that you are some kind of crook who has tried to steal money, money that wasn't yours, that you abused, going on vacations you couldn't afford, going into the bar and saying, the drinks are on me, friends. Everybody have a drink. Here, here's my credit card, bartender. You were doing all kinds of stupid things with your credit card. And now your debt has caught up to you. And now you're $50,000 in debt. What if somebody, some rich person would show up and take that debt and tear it up? and pay the credit card company off and tell that credit card company, don't call him on the phone anymore and don't harass him with a process server from the court. Don't sue him. He owes you nothing. He is now free. Can you imagine how relieved you would be? Once you understand your bankruptcy in sin and iniquity, how lost you are, how bankrupt your life is, what a sinner you are, a sinner with a capital S. And you know what? If I had preached this message a lot better than I did, I would have started out with this. I would have, I would have gotten the listener almost sweating thinking about their own credit card debt and then i would have transferred that sweat to sweating about their spiritual bankruptcy their spiritual coiv guilt debt the hive is the debt what do I owe God? He's given me my life. What have I done with it? Did I abuse whatever freedom he gave me? Did I turn my back on him? Did I, did I do something I shouldn't have done? Am I a sinner? Do I need a savior? Am I in trouble with God? Am I in debt? I'm talking about debt with a capital D. Is there a heavenly indictment against me? Is the full statute requirement of the Torah 
the male who cut hatora pointing its finger at me whoever does not uphold all the words of this torah to do it it has a curse cursed is everyone who does not uphold all the entire the whole torah to do it the male who cut hatora the full statute requirement of the torah whoever has not upheld it has a curse. Well, that would include all of us. We're all sinners. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's no one who can say, well, I, you know, I'm such a religious person and I'm so punctilious about my religion that, you know, this doesn't apply to me because I, I, I eat my halal food and I cover my face and I dress modestly and I do the the uh, five times a day prayers, and I'm just a, a paragon of virtue. There's no one who could say that. We're all in trouble. As far as Hoyv is concerned, debt, we're all $50,000, $80,000 in debt. And this indictment, this heavenly indictment is against us. And Moshiach has done away with it. He nailed this opposing record, and there is a record of all of our sins. He nailed it to Moshiach's etz. And that's why the etz of Moshiach is so important. And that's why the etz of Moshiach is the etz hayim, the tree of life. Because when he did that, he disarmed the, the, the demonic uh, thing that was against us. Uh, he made a public spectacle of all the demonic things that were swirling around him. If you are the son of God, the son of the Roy Mister, uh, come down. Let's, you know, save, save yourself. Why are you doing this? If you're the king, why are you on a stake? He triumphed over those demons, those mocking demons. He triumphed over Pontius Pilate, who said, I have the power. No, you do not have the power, my friend. You do not have the power. I'm going to make a public spectacle of your power. I'm going to triumph over your power. I'm going to triumph over the worst possible thing that anyone ever imagined, which is the etz. The, 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 the tree where you are hanged to rot in public in great agony, naked and rotting. They were naked and they were not ashamed. Then... They were naked, and they they knew they were naked, and they had a fear because they heard the voice of God, and they were naked and not ready to 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 stand before God because they were naked before His wrath. Moshiach ben David actually took that. What you find there in chapter 3 of Voracious, he actually took that for you. He was naked. He was exposed to that wrath. But he was innocent. He was a lamb, an innocent lamb. There was no uh, mirma. Uh, mirma in his, there was no deceit in him so he could be your vicarious substitute he was a lamb without spot without blemish without flaw for you and this is why he had to go to Jerusalem and this is why it had to be on Pesach because he was the lamb led to the slaughter 
And by doing this, he erased the hand signs saper of guilt debt. He got us out of debt. If you are guilty today, you don't have to be. Because he erased your guilt. He nailed it to his tree for you. He disarmed the demonic powers that would accuse you. I'm talking about the accuser of the brethren. Moshiach ben Dovid, I thank you for what you did. I was naked and fearful before a holy God and his wrath because I was a child of those fallen that we see at the end of Veracious chapter 3. And I know that I need I needed a savior who would be willing to be naked and completely cursed under the wrath of God for me to pay the guilt the debt to get me out of debtor's prison to tear up my credit cards and get the credit card demons off of my back the process server and the debt collectors and everyone who would try to put me under condemnation. There is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Moshiach ben Dovid. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Moshiach ben Dovid, come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life, and I will serve you and follow you all the days of my life. And everybody said, Amen. <laughs>